If you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know that I really like Mosin Nagants. This is my M44. Now, you also know that I'm not on team. The Mosin Nagant is the greatest military service rifle that ever lived, and you should uh, use this to replace every rifle that you own. But I'm also not on team. The Mosin Nagant is the worst military service rifle that ever existed, and you should not consider owning one at all. Instead, I think that all firearms design is a choice of trade-offs. And the trade-offs that they made with this one in particular, for better or for worse, made it a very unique military rifle. Now, what I would like to talk about today is seven ways that the Mosin Nagant is better than the Mauser. Now, that doesn't mean that the Mosin Nagant is better than the Mauser, but that it has at least seven things about it that make it better for its original context or in case of the use of the modern military surplus collector and shooter. So, let's jump into it. First is cost to historical significance. Uh, like I just said, this is my M44. This one is dated 1946, but you can find war models for uh, $400, sometimes less than that, sometimes more than that. This one, though, is a 1946. So this rifle could have served in World War II had it been a few years earlier. You can also get Chinese Type 53s that were in Vietnam for sometimes as low as two to $300. And this is my 1891 long rifle, and mine is a Remington Arsenal production. So this is one of the more rare 1891 rifles, but it is very unique. Now, this one is probably the most boring of the possibilities for service. Uh, it was made in the U.S. and it doesn't have any markings indicated that it, indicating that it ever went to Russia or that it served in the U.S. military. So likely, it was just surplused out with many other Remington Mosin-Nagants. Now, for wartime Mausers, you will sometimes be paying two or three or four times more than you would for a Russian wartime Mosin-Nagant, given the same history and the same quality. And for whatever reason, that is just because Mausers are more delectable for certain people. In that case, I'm specifically talking about German Car 98Ks and uh, Gewehr 98s, but there are other Mausers too that are generally still more expensive than these Mosin-Nagants are, given their wartime use. Going along with that theme of cost, we have ammo availability. This is a stripper clip of five rounds of 7.62 by 54R, and this is a stripper clip of five rounds of 7 by 7.92 by 57 or 8mm Mauser. Now, both of these ammos are somewhat similar in performance. I believe the 8mm is a little bit more powerful, um, but not by much. And they're both really fun to shoot. But you can buy this ammo for, I don't know, 50 to 60 cents a round, and this leans more towards 75 for good ammo. This stuff is Greek ammo from 1940, and so we will be doing a video on this soon uh, once I get out to the range to shoot it. Another factor is that since Mosin Nagants have been imported into the United States for so long and in such high numbers, you used to be able to buy ammo for 7.62 by 54 at Walmart. And you can still buy it at most sporting goods stores, even if you can't get 8 by 57. Now, the reason I talked about 8mm Mauser specifically is because it is the most common of the Mauser rounds. There are many other Mauser rounds. That is the most common, except for 7.62x51, that's pretty common in the US. But generally speaking for Mausers, 8x57 is the most common round. Also, I'm the 8mm Mauser man, so I needed to talk about it. However, relating to um, that specific issue, that 7.62x54R is really the only Mosin Nagant cartridge with a few exceptions, there's also parts interchangeability. Now, like I said, this is my 1917 Mosin Nagant, and this is my M44. Uh, this rifle was made in 1917, and this rifle was made in 1946. But I believe these were produced up until the 50s in Russia, and in some other countries until later than that. So here I have one of the earliest patterns of Mosin Nagants, and one of the latest patterns of Mosin Nagants. I'm gonna set the big one down and show you some things on the small one. One of the interesting things about this rifle is that for most of its existence, from here on the rifle to here on the rifle, did not really change that much. So what that means is, if I need to replace a part in that 1917 rifle, I don't need to go back and find a relatively rare Mosin Nagant variant 
Instead, I can find any old trigger spring or whatever part I need from any Mosnagat and put it in that rifle. So what that means is, let's say my firing pin breaks. Instead of needing to find a firing pin that was made for that specific early Mosnagant, if I go on Google and type in Mosnagant firing pin, the first thing that comes up, most likely it will fit in that gun. And when I had some parts break on that gun, that is exactly what I was able to do. With Mousers, you can't really do that. And the reason for that is that there are countless variants. Variants from different countries, variants from different years and patterns, variants within the same country but different years. When I first got this 2447, a previous owner had put a Mauser Car 98K firing pin and firing pin spring inside of it, and it made the rifle not function. So in order to get this rifle functional, um, I had to buy components that were specific to this Mauser. And really there are only two or three, maybe four Mauser variants that have the same firing pin as this one in particular. So a part that on a Mosin Nagant might have cost me, I don't know, maybe $20, ended up costing me around 50 or 60. So with Mausers, two rifles that look very similar could have very different parts, whereas with Mosin Nagants, most of the working parts are identical or interchangeable even if they're not exactly identical. While I'm trying to keep this mostly pretty general, there is one thing I'd like to talk about in particular that is specific to the M44 and the 9130 Mosin Nagants, which are the two most common, at least in the United States, and that is the sights. In my opinion, and in the opinion of others, Mosnagant sights are really pretty good and better than Mauser sights. And the reason for that is because they use a uh, rear U-notch and a front post, which is a very good sighting system. Whereas the Mausers use a barleycorn style sight, and that is a rear V-notch and a barleycorn in the front. It's a lot harder to, in my opinion, um, level out, and for people who have poor eyesight, that, is often, that can often cause issues because that front barley corn is very, very narrow. This isn't something I have experience with in particular, but one thing that I've heard multiple people talk about is that the front sight post is flat at the top and that that is a big advantage for long range shooters because if they want to adjust windage, they can do it based on that front sight post. When you have a front barley corn that comes to a point, you can't really do that. Also, another thing that I would like to note is my 1891 has a front barley corn because that's what the early Mosnagants had. Um, and another issue with that front barley corn is they can become worn easier than a front post can. Because a front post is squared at the top, there's a little bit more surface area, whereas the narrow barley corn can get dinged up and um, hit off base a lot easier than this sighting system can. Generally speaking, I believe that the 98 pattern Mauser is one of the best bolts for a bolt action service rifle. But I do think that there is one major flaw that we don't talk about enough, and that is the way that the striker works and how it causes a lot of problems. So one thing that the Mosnagant has is not that problem. With the Mauser, it is common to experience light strikes and duds, and there are a few different reasons for this. One of them is not the fault of the gun itself, and that is hard primers on specific military ammos, as well as ammo that has aged over time and aged poorly and wasn't stored in proper conditions. That caused the rifle to have more issues. But there is another glaring issue too, and that is that the firing pin protrusion is not adjustable, and the Mosnagants is. If you own and clean your Mosnagant, you know this, but if your firing pin gets worn over time, every Mosnagant owner should have this tool right here, which is a few different things. One is it is a disassembly tool. It has a screwdriver so you can undo, I think, every screw on the gun that you need to do a full disassembly for um, high maintenance cleaning. But it also has the tools needed to take the bolt apart. And a part of this is it has a firing pin protrusion gauge on it. So with this tool, you can take your bolt apart and you can lengthen your firing pin if necessary. An aspect of that is that Mosin-Nagants rarely have problems with light strikes such as duds or hang fires because of that. However, with Mausers, it's quite common. And it's not just issues with the firing pin protrusion itself, but it's also the striker spring. And for whatever reason, Mauser striker springs just wear out faster than some other rifles, or maybe they aren't as strong as some other rifles and that causes some other issues. 
I had a lot of problems when I first bought this 2447 with the firing pin and striker. And in order to fix those problems, I had to file on the cocking piece, I had to straighten out the tip of the firing pin, I had to put a new spring in it, I had to do all of these things that with a Mosin Nagant, I've never had to do and I haven't talked to many collectors who have. Let's talk about accessories. Accessories is another area where I believe most Nagants are better than Mausers. It's not necessarily that the accessories are better quality or more usable, it's more that they're far more available here in the United States. So this is a Mosin Nagant ammo pouch and you can normally find these for 10 to $15, sometimes less, sometimes more, um, but I would say that that's most common, at least in my experience. If you wanted to get this same type of thing for a Car 98K, one, because they were imported less, and two, because they are more desirable to certain collectors, they cost quite a bit more. And let's say you want to get something that is specific to a certain variant of Mauser. So if I wanted to get something that was specific for my Yugoslavian Mauser, that would be even higher because of that rarity. This is the same thing with bayonets. If you want to get a bayonet for a 9130, which is the most common Mosnagant from my experience at least, uh, they will normally run about $20. But if I want to get a bayonet for this 2447, it's about 60 or 70 at the cheapest. Are bayonets and original pouches really that practical? Well, probably not, but they are pretty cool and I think fun to collect. It's a part of collecting that is a little bit cheaper to get into than collecting full-on rifles. Another thing I would like to briefly touch on related to that is if you're the kind of guy who wants to get a 762x54R shirt, or you want to buy a pillow that's in the shape of a spam can, or you want to put decals in your car or on your wall, you can find all sorts of things like that for the Mosin Nagant that you can't find for the Mauser. Are those things tacky and kind of silly? Yeah, probably, but they are something that some people like to have. Finally, and while most of this video has been pretty objective, or at least opinions that are somewhat widely agreed upon, this thing is entirely subjective and entirely my opinion. And that is what I'm calling Mosin Nagant effect. I don't know what it is, but there is just something about Mosin Nagants that is fun. Um, I, I think I have a guess, and one of those guesses is you kind of need to slap them around a little bit. If you try to work the bolt and baby it, it's not going to work. You really need to apply some force and manhandle it. And with Mausers, for example, they don't really like it when you manhandle them. If you try and like slap a Mauser bolt home, it's not really going to agree with you in the same way a Mosin Nagant will. If you need to put a Mosin Nagant on the ground and kick the bolt open, that's fine, they'll take it. Mausers just aren't quite conducive to that. They still work if you need to in a pinch, but it's just not quite the same. I've had several instances where I've handed a new shooter a Mosin Nagant and they just had this smile on their face the whole time. Even if it was giving them trouble or not working, they were just excited, I think because of that, slapping it around, and it just, it just feels like a cool and elegant and weighty weapon. Um, and, and, and they just have a cool historical effect there. Also, something I think is really cool about the M44s that kind of adds to that effect is the side folding bayonet. Um, is it practical? No. Is it annoying for people who want to shoot these accurately? Yes, but they look cool and they're fun to use. And for a lot of shooters like myself, we shoot this kind of thing to have a good time. One of the things that the Mosin Nagant effect has led to is a really fun community surrounding Mosin Nagants. Um, there are those toxic guys who are like, the Mosin Nagant sucks and it's the worst, and there's those toxic guys who will claim that the Mosin Nagant is the uh, best rifle to ever exist, and if you question anything about it, you're a heretic. But generally speaking, I find the Mosin Nagant community to be a lot of fun and recognize the rifle's flaws while also recognizing that it has a lot of advantages too. So I hope this video has been entertaining for you guys. Um, I want to know a few thoughts though. Do you think that anything I said here is completely off base or completely wrong? Or also, is there anything that I missed that you think is an advantage of the Mosin Nagant that the Mauser doesn't have? If there is, leave that in the comments below and let me know. In any case, I angered all of the Mauser fanboys and I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Name John.